Hi, this is Russell Stenard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're going to look at Google Translate. I'm going to show you some of the features in Google Translate, for example, how you can save sentences. I'm also going to suggest a few ways that you can use Google Translate. I use it a lot in my own language learning. I'm currently studying Polish. It's been really helpful for me and I'm going to show you some examples of why. Of course, you could be teaching other languages. It's going to work the same way. Uh, this is going to be a short video, but it's going to give you some ideas and really what I'm suggesting is that you show this tool to your students and show them different ways that they can use it and it can help them to build their language, build their confidence, they can hear the pronunciation of words, they can practice sentences and um, I believe, particularly at lower levels, it's a really, really useful tool. Okay, now there's a couple of ways of finding Google Translate. You can just search for Google Translate. When you do a search, it's going to open here at the top of the screen, but the best thing though is to click on Open in Google Translate because this is just basically showing you a search return. So if you click here, it's going to bring you to Google Translate. And in a minute, we'll start to show you some of the things it can do. And if we come over here also and click on our apps, if, as long as we're logged in, you need to be logged into Google for um, you to be able to access it this way but if you uh, have logged into your apps and you can click on Google Translate now it is a really good idea to have a Gmail account and log into your Gmail account to use Google Translate because the features that are available uh, when you work with Google Translate are really only available if you're logged in so remember to have a Gmail account is free and if you've got a Gmail account you've got Google Translate and then you'll be able to do all the things that I'm just about to show you now so let's start now, how good Google Translate will be dep will depend a lot on the language that you're working from. I've set my language here as English, and I've set my language that I want to work on as Polish. You can just click here to change the language. Um, so I'm trying to learn uh, about shopping at the moment, and this was a kind of tricky word this morning, which I came across in my lesson, strawberry, which is truszkawka. Now, I can actually click here and listen to that. So I can just write the word here and click here, Truskafka. And if I wanted to check another um, word, let's say, for example, I'm learning fruits in, in, in Polish, then again, I can write the word in English and then I can click here Bluska. and hear the word pronounced in uh, Polish. So very useful for kind of simple one word translations. OK, uh, sometimes it will give you alternatives to that particular word as well. Uh, if you look down here, for example, you'll get some additional information and also you get some information about the frequency. I'm guessing that's the frequency on Google. So very simple for or very useful for basic pronunciation of words. But what I really like to do is, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, to save any new words that I learn. So for example, if I've got a word like pair that I've just learned today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and that word is now going to be added to my favorites list. And if I wanted to do the same with the word strawberry, I can do that as well by simply again just writing the word again because I didn't save it before and then just click in and sorry, trying to write here in front of my microphone. The word's going to come up and again I click here and that adds that word to my favorites list. Now one of the things that's probably quite important in whatever language you're teaching, but it is particularly important in Polish because the fact that there are various cases depends with the object, if the noun is an object of the verb, preposition, etc. So for example, I like to um, actually write sentences and see how the word works in the sentence. So if I write, for example, I have strawberries, uh, then I'm going to get slightly different. Uh, so I'm going to get, okay, so here we got mum truszkawki. So this is obviously the plural of the word. And if I was to write, I have a strawberry, again, I'm going to get a different, uh, slightly different word, obviously, because it's in singular, but also because uh, in Polish, there will be a small gram grammatical change uh, because of the case of this word. So what I'm saying is, it's great for kind of practicing sentences and looking at how the word falls within a sentence. And what I really like about that is then is to listen to it. Mam truskawkę. Mam truskawkę. And then again, I can save that. Now, one thing that I do a lot these days is I save the individual word and then I save the word with a sentence. So I might learn the word pear and then learn the word pear in a sentence. Learn the word strawberry and then 
learn the word strawberry in a sentence so that I'm actually hearing the word in context. Now, I keep saving all these words. Well, why is that useful? Well, because if I click here, and as long as I'm logged into Google, then I can click and see all the words that I've currently saved. And there's quite a few words because I've been doing a lot of work with stro uh, shopping recently. I've got a total of 23 phrases and I can go through those phrases. We can just see that one here that I've saved. I have a strawberry, mum truskafke. And I can even listen to it again here. Mum truskafke. And then I've got the word on its own. Remember, I saved strawberry on its own. Truskafka. Okay. And then we had the word pear as well. Gluska. Okay, now one of the other things as well is as soon as I'm happy with a particular word and I think, yeah, I really understand that word, I can just delete it here on the right hand side. So saving words means that I've got them all immediately ready. So when I'm doing a lesson, I actually have my Google Translate open uh, and as words come up, I will write it in and save them immediately so that I basically got a list of all the vocabulary that's coming up within a lesson. And that can be a really useful way of working with Google Translate. So one obvious activity you can do, which one that I do for myself a lot, is that I kind of explore the language through using my first language. So if, for example, I've got a word like pear, or um, today we were looking at the words, for example, florist. Okay, so again, I want to first of all look the word up, florist. Okay, again, I can hit click here. Fiatas. Yeah, kfiachas. And then if I want to then say, for example, right, I'm going to see what it would be like to say the word, for example, I buy flowers in the florist. Okay. And then again, sorry, I could then again, so again, I can click here and listen. Kupuje kwiaty w kwiaciarni. Kupuje kwaty w kwiaciarni. Okay, so again, I'm learning the language in, 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 in a sentence. I'm obviously practicing the verb in the present simple. I'm practicing the word flowers, and I'm also practicing uh, the word uh, in the florist, so which is slightly different from just the word florist on its own because of the preposition. So this is really useful for me because it allows me to experiment and to learn sentences in context. Now, one of the other things that we can do is that after Words, we can then practice our uh, sentences and one way we can do that is in pairs so for example if I gave my list of words to a student they could test me on the words that I'm learning and I can do the same for them now there's two ways that we could do this one could be simply to show the computer screen to the other person so that way that they can simply look at your words and test you with your vocabulary and see if you can remember sentences so for example someone might say to me right I have a strawberry how do you say that in Polish which is something I do with my partner because she's also a Polish speaker so it's great for practice like that but also if you want to the other option is if you click here on export to Google Sheets you can simply put um, the in the the words into a Google Sheet okay and I'm just going to quickly do that and now I've got the English and the Polish now one thing if you do that sometimes what you need to do is just hopefully I can do this just make that wider okay so that you've got the whole you can see the whole sentence in English and the whole sentence in Polish see and I've got all of the vocabulary that I'm currently working on and that's why I like Google uh, Translate because I can use it for trying to practice the language in context so that that way I'm practicing the verbs that I've been recently learning and for example the objects and places where I can go shopping really useful tool very simple to use I know this will be a bit controversial I realize that at very high levels it may not be as good and and I realize that the accuracy is not always as good if it's, say, English to, to Chinese or something like that. But I will leave a link to an article about the accuracy. And I have to say, so far, when it's been my level of Polish, which is really just a kind of very much an elementary, pre-intermediate level, this tool is really useful. So remember, once you've got your list, and of course, as I said, make this a bit wider so that you can clearly read uh, all the words... Uh, nice and clearly okay in the two columns that's English to Polish if you click up here to file and you just simply want to click on download as and you can download that as a PDF file or as a, as a Microsoft Excel document and that way then you can print it out and save it for yourself uh, you can even print it from here actually uh, you can just click on file and go to print as well that's also possible so a really useful way of getting a list of all the words that you've recently been studying and that's why I'd really encourage you to show this technology to your students
I hope you find that useful. I realize it's going to be a little bit controversial because a lot of people still are adverse to translating. I'm definitely not anymore. I used to be, but now I use it a lot in my own language learning. Uh, please comment on the videos. Please like the videos if you like them. If you're looking for more content, there's really two key places that I would suggest you come. Firstly, to teachertrainingvideos.com. Lots of free videos here. And you can look at the different topics here at the top of the screen, including lots of information about different Google tools. Uh, just click on whatever you're interested in and then click on the video that you want to learn about and it will open up a video and you can play it. The other thing to do is to look at the free content that we've got available that's topic based. So if you're interested in feedback or flipped classroom and there'll be a lot of new stuff coming into this section. Probably the best thing to do if you really want to follow my work is to sign up to my newsletter. I always let you know about all the new videos within the newsletter. And so that would be another really good place to follow me. That way you'll find out about any online courses that I'm running and also uh, any kind of webinars that I'm giving, etc. And then the other place is obviously on YouTube. All the videos that I produce go onto the YouTube channel. So that again is another good place to find my content. And uh, thank you very much.